So my presentation is on testing for antibiotic producing bacteria extracted from the soil. In this experiment, we were attempting to discover novel antibiotics and explain the process behind it. So a little background information is that antibiotics are medications that are used in response to a bacterial infection. As the use of antibiotics increases, the bacterial resistance increases along with it. So that's why there's this never ending search for new antibiotics. And in our case, we search for antibiotic producing bacteria from soil samples. So my hypothesis was that I would find antibiotic producing bacteria because I collected soil from the base of a tree. So my reasoning was that the bacteria in the soil had some sort of positive interaction with the tree's roots that kept the tree healthy. And maybe the tree supplied nutrients for the bacteria in a sort of symbiotic relationship. So the first step of this experiment was to collect the soil sample. I collected my sample from the well, base of the tree uh, near the Monongahela River at California University of Pennsylvania. I removed about the first inch of topsoil and shoveled the fresh soil that I just introduced into a sterile tube. Then I kept my soil cool until the zero dilutions. On the left side of the screen, or at least my left, you can see my soil data collection sheet. Important note is that it did rain the day before I collected my soil, which could have washed away some bacteria contenders. So as I mentioned earlier, after the soil sampling, I performed serial dilutions. This was done by vortexing one gram of the soil sample with 900 milliliters of water to make a 10 to the one dilution. Then 100 microliters was removed from the 10 to the one dilution and vortexed with a fresh 900 microliters to make a 10 to the two dilution. Then this process was repeated until a 10 to the five dilution was met. The 10 to the three, 10 to the four, and 10 to the five serial dilutions were distributed, distributed, distributed with the spread plate method. Then the 10 to the three dilution uh, produced 16 colonies. The 10 to the four produced one colony, and the 10 to the five dilution produced five colonies. So these numbers were lower than expected and well lower than desired. This was most likely from the rain that occurred before my sampling or human air or a combination while making the spread plate. And another error to note is, <laughs> is the failed plating of the 10 to the 4 dilution. As you can see, there's barely one colony. So, excuse me, after the spread plates were made, uh, colonies were taken from these plates using the pick and patch method. This was a process where the bacteria was picked from the spread plate and patched onto a new agar plate that would become the master plate. This is a plate that will contain all our bacteria organized in one place that we can refer to later. The master plate allows us to compare different colonies. After comparing mine, which you can see in the table, I likely had only 10 unique isolates. Isolate seven had some contamination during the street plating and it didn't grow. Then isolates nine and 10 were likely from the same colony. And this raises an interesting question that I can I will bring up when looking at the antibiotic production tests. So next, uh, the gram stain test was performed on isolate three and Pseudomonas florensians. Both of these bacteria are gram negative and bacillus shaped. So now the antibiotic screening was performed by adding bacteria from our master plates to three new agar plates. Uh, one of these plates was covered in E. coli, another in S. epi, and the third was covered in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And if bacteria had an antibiotic producing ability, uh, a halo would form around the colony. So I only had one potential antibiotic producing bacteria, which is isolate 10 on the Pseudomonas aeruginosa on triptic soy agar. As I mentioned earlier, this is interesting since isolates 9 and 10 were likely from the same colony. However, only isolate 10 showed signs of antibiotic production. So then two isolates, uh, B. subtilis and E. coli were all plated on selective and differential medias. These bacteria tests were tested on McConkie agar and EMB agar. Both these medias are selective for gram-negative bacteria and differentiate lactose fermenting bacteria from non-lactose fermenting bacteria. So isolate one and E. coli tested negative on McConkie agar and E. subtilis tested positive. Uh, isolate three was not plated on, plated on McConkie agar. 
And then on the EMB agar, isolates three and one, and Isotilis tested negative and E. coli tested positive. Uh, the final steps of the experiment were the biochemical tests. Three, uh, three biochemical tests were performed, a nutrient gelatin test, an oxidase test, and a catalyst test. The nutrient gelatin test was performed in four separate test tubes for each bacteria. The oxidase test tested two isolates, E. coli and B. subtilis, and against to see if they had the cytochrome oxidase. Uh, finally, the same four bacteria were used in the catalyst test where hydrogen peroxide was dripped onto all four of them. The only bacteria that tested positive for the nutrient gelatin test, which, pretty, which means it produced gelatinase with E. subtilis, the other three bacteria, isolates three, or isolates one, three, and E. coli, did not produce gelatinase. For the oxidase test, isolate three is the only bacteria that appeared blue. B. subtilis only shows color because it pen leaked through on the other side. B. subtilis did not test positive. And then all three bacteria screened, that were screened for the catalyst test tested positive, isolates three, the E. coli, and B. subtilis. And it turns out I had a false positive uh, on isolate 10, refuting my hypothesis. And then considering this, I think there's two directions this experiment can go. So for future research, if this experiment were to be recreated, I think that someone could uh, either broaden the study and collect soil from a range of locations. For example, they could go to every state in the, United, in the US or take a second direction and narrow it down to a specific location. For this idea, someone would limit collecting the soil from the same location, say every week, for a specific time range. And finally, I think that adding a DNA test in the blast search would be beneficial. And this is my reference slide. And that is, that is my, uh, my presentation. Thank you.